While certain details have been altered for the sake of dramatization, the following true story has been carefully researched for authenticity and is presented as it happened. Our time in Istanbul had lasted two years. They were good years, but at the same time, we knew the good days were drawing to a close, since we were faced with quite few dangers. Therefore, we decided to leave Istanbul, and the first place we went to was the country of Bosnia. From there, we decided to go to Austria with the help of the smugglers. Our hope was that the Austrian government would give us asylum. We traveled at night and rested during the day, sometimes walking on foot and other times traveling by car. The closer we got to the Austrian border, the greater was the danger of being arrested. one by one. It won't hold us all at once. Okay. We cross one by one. One person at a time. One by one. The smuggler was first to cross. Then my daughter Esther, followed by Murdoch. They crossed to the other side easily. But I wasn't sure if Joseph would be able to make it on his own. I was worried about him. Be careful, my son. Look, he's just a kid. Let me go with him. Go. Go, my son. said, I've come to take you with me. Where is this God you always talk about? I turned toward my God and I said, Lord, tell me, did you bring us to this forsaken place just so we would die? Where did I make a mistake? Where did I go wrong? I saw him the other day. He was, he was doing good. Give us some grapes. Oh, yeah, yeah, have some grapes. Some of that stew. Hey, Khosrow, pass the bread. Hey, guys, don't you think Khosrow resembles the zombies shown in the American movies? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Dear Khosrow only needs to eat more food. I've told your mother to serve him the kind of food I used to feed your father. See how healthy and plump he is? Khosrow can be like him too. Hey, Khosrow, are you there? I have to go to work. Did you say work? 
You should be in the university now. I make more money than all of you. The reason I don't make money is because I'm a full-time student. Unlike some people who quit their studies for a job, and with a phone company at that. Enough, kids. Now that's enough. Be quiet. When your grandfather died, God bless his soul, everyone cried at his funeral. Everyone except Khosrow. My son was very sad at that time. How do you know that? He told me so himself. He never said anything to me. I had a friend at work who had depression. What happened? Well, it's obvious. What's obvious? Khosrow has depression. What we need to do is look for a nice girl for our son. Maybe one of his cousins, why not? That's what Khosrow really needs. Farzan, you didn't finish the story. Tell me, what happened to your friend? Well, he committed suicide. We are a large family, and usually in large families in Iran, a lot of things happen. Up until that time, no one in the family had ever seen my tears. They were of the opinion that I had no feelings or emotions, but my situation was getting worse day by day. I tried to get close to God through His laws and commandments by reading many different books and participating in different religious gatherings and activities. I was searching for God, but I couldn't find Him. I had a strange feeling, a feeling that there was an emptiness in my soul, an emptiness that couldn't be filled. Then one day, as I was walking to work, I passed this church, which I had passed many times before. This time, however, something was different. It seemed as though a voice from within the church called me. Every day, I used to take a different route when returning home from work. But it seemed as if the voice which had called to me in the morning told me to return home by the same way I had taken in the morning. Excuse me, ma'am. Is anyone here? Who are you? Khosro Khodadadi. What do you want here? I wanted to know what goes on here. Do you attend this church? Do I look like a Christian to you? No, forgive me. Well, when do people gather here? Every Sunday. Well, thank you, ma'am. I'll come back. Don't expect to find anyone here on Sunday. Until then, I couldn't remember ever having looked forward to something as much as I looked forward to that day. Whether it was my birthday, my school graduation, or some other special day, none of it had mattered before. Now, for the first time in my life, I was anxious for the arrival of that day, and that day was Sunday. <laughs> وبرونو صورة خايمة بتاع الأكس بابا ومار لهال السامي باين أعزم مبسمن بيو بابا حلو يل. When I entered the church, I saw few older men and older ladies, and a man who was speaking. I didn't understand any of what was being said. I didn't know what language he was speaking. Later on, I found out this man was speaking Assyrian which is the language spoken by one of the Christian minorities in Iran. Hello, my son. Welcome. Thank you. Sit down, sit down. Thank you. How can I help you, my son? Where do I begin? I passed by here before, but I never came inside. <laughs> Stand up. Stand up. I have something to show you. The New Testament? What's it about? 
This is the most important book I'm going to give you. It's the story of Jesus Christ in your language. When you have read these books, come back here and see me again. And it won't hurt for you to smile from time to time either. Now let's go. Jesus called a small child over to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I assure you, unless you turn from your sins and become as little children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. I read the entire New Testament, but I was still the same person. Nothing had changed in me. So I started from the beginning again. I repeated this many times. Even though I was feeling no change taking place in me, still, it was like someone or something kept telling me, read on and don't stop. So I repeated this many times. One day when I came back from work, anger, hopelessness and apathy had filled my being. I felt as if nothing and no one could help me. I felt completely alone and isolated. If you're for real, come and speak to me. And if not, then get out. Get out and let Khosro be Khosro. Give me your hand and your life will change. I didn't know who he was. I just knew that it was a vision. I was not asleep. Since I had just thrown the book to the corner of the room. It was interesting that I could hear his voice in the room. There were other noises too, like the boiling sound of my mother's samovar. I felt as if this person was not a stranger at all. As if he had been with me since childhood. As if he had been with me during the painful years. His voice was a very familiar voice. That's why I didn't feel as if he were a stranger. And he said, give me your hand. I gave him my hand without any fear or any hesitation, and he took my hand. And he put his hand in mine. I had a strange sensation, as if a jolt of electricity entered through my fingertips and engulfed my entire body. My entire body became wet with perspiration and I had a feeling of peace. My old shell had been broken and my old self knocked down. I was a new human being. I believe the moment I saw him, all of my pain and my sadness and hopelessness left me, an everlasting joy entered my heart, a joy I had longed for. The pressures and pain left me, all the wounds and scabs which had caused me to be seen an angry and tough person dissolved from me. In their place came the joy of the Lord. When I opened my eyes, 
Everything and everyone was beautiful. Everything seemed so perfect to me. My father, my mother, our old house, even the old little water pond in our yard with those lovely red goldfish in it. Everything had changed, everything in my life, and they all become new to me. My dear Kosro, you're born again. You are now a new creation in Jesus Christ. The pastor of this church is young and speaks Farsi. Go to him and he will teach you good things. When I started attending that church, the pastor tried very hard to develop a friendship with me. He was very eager. Although he knew I was from a different religious background, but he had seen something in me and I felt it as well, that I was not just an ordinary believer at that church, but that God had different expectations of me. And I also realized that I had a desire to serve the Lord. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, who came to the earth for me and you. Look, Mariam has brought cake for us. Thank you, sweetheart. By the way, kids, did you know Kosra has gotten a promotion at work? <laughs> no, 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 Mom. They've offered me one. What's the difference, my son? Well, actually, I haven't made my decision yet. What are you waiting for? Well, there's other work that I prefer. What other work? Well, Dad, it's God's work. All of us are happy to see the changes that have occurred in Khosro, but everything has a limit. Come on, after all, we are Muslims. Listen, your mother and I have raised all of you with two goals in mind. First, that you learn how to love each other and be together as a family. Second, that you study hard and gain self-confidence in order to take care of yourselves. Today, my son smiles. He cries. He looks at me and tells me, tells me, Dad, I love you. If if Jesus has brought these changes about in Khosro, then I have no objections. Jesus told me he wants me to be like a soldier. And you've made your decision? Whatever Jesus says, I quit my job. The wise man fears sin. Fears sin and keeps away from it. But the foolish man is in distress because of his pride. Iran is changing, Khosro. Strange things are happening, persecutions are starting, and no one knows where it will all end. Have you thought this through? Is this your decision? You will have to pay a big price, a very big price for this decision. Price? Yes, price. The price may be that because of your decision and your belief, you will have to leave Iran, leave this country. Do you understand this? That is not too great a price to pay for the one who has given me eternal life. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. We have to get moving. Can't stay here. But they need to rest. But not here!
How did... How did you... How did you find your son? Someone put him in my hands. Here we are. This is Austria. We cannot go any further than this. You must go by yourselves from here on. Thank you. Goodbye. At last we had reached the Austrian border. We thought that we had arrived safely, but no sooner had we crossed onto Austrian soil than the Austrian police arrested us. Our clothes weren't even dry from all the hiking. But instead of deporting us back to our country or to Turkey, when they realized I was a pastor, they began to treat us with respect. Although they were not our countrymen, nor spoke our language, they moved us into a home and took care of us there. When Joseph and I fell into that river, I had thought that it was all over. But actually, Satan and death had only danced in front of us without power to harm us. After eight months in Austria, we were accepted into the United States as refugees. We moved to United States and started serving among the Iranian churches there. A friend who is willing to be best friend to all of us. I'm speaking about the most powerful person in the world, the one who controls all powers in existence. Even though he is the highest power, he still understands what it is to be in pain and to suffer. He knows the bitter taste of rejection, trust me. He is a friend to me and to you. He is a friend to my family. Friend to my wife, Merdot. My daughter, Esther. My son, Joseph. He is Jesus Christ. The Jesus Christ who actually can change your life, my friends. Jesus Christ can change your lives today. A world of despair, a future without hope. Such was the daily horizon for a young man named Khosro Khodadadi. No one, not even his family, had seen him cry not even once, or laugh for that matter, or show any feeling. It was as if he was just existing. That's it. Khosra had a future, future without hope, a very dark future. My friend, have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt that you were just existing? You were just getting by and just waiting, just waiting until life comes to an end? Ask yourself, please. My friend, that doesn't need to be the way the story of your life ends. Your life is meant to be fulfilling, to have purpose and meaning. Jesus Christ came to give each one of us just such a life. In the Gospels, God promises the overflowing life to each one of us. When the young Khosro decided to open his heart and mind to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, he discovered God's promise and yet God's wonderful invitation. God's invitation for Khosro came in the form of a hand that was extended towards him. Not just any hand, 
but the hand of the Savior, the hand of the risen Lord, who desired to give Khosro a future filled with hope. When Khosro reached out for that hand, his life was changed from that day forward. My friend, the same Jesus who entered into Khosro's life desires to reach into your life. Believe me, he knows the situation you're in and he knows your exact condition. He understands your worries, your fears, your heartache. He isn't limited by time or space or by language or religion. My friend, he loves all people the same. He loves you. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be your savior, my friend. Are you ready to take his hand today? He may or may not come to you in a vision or a dream, but he wants to be with you. Whoever you are, wherever you are, if you call upon Jesus' name from the bottom of your heart with sincerity and truth, he will definitely answer you. But how do I call upon him, you ask? What can I possibly do? My friend, if you would like to meet this remarkable savior who changed the life of Khosro, I would like to help you meet him today. Not only that, he would like to meet you. His hand, his heart is extended to you, my friend. Please say this prayer with me now. Repeat these words after me from the bottom of your heart. The God of love is listening. He will not refuse anyone who comes to him in sincerity and truth. Whatever you have done or failed to do, it doesn't matter. God desires to bring you into his warm embrace. If you are a religious person, God doesn't want to give you a religion. He wants to give you himself. Maybe you weren't raised a religious person or perhaps you have fallen away from God. Perhaps at some point you've rejected God, but know this, God hasn't rejected you. His loving arms are wide open to you. He is the God of love and his amazing perfect love will cover all of your sins. He will take away your sorrows, your pain, and your hopelessness through his peaceful and loving presence. Let's pray together. Let's together, right now, call on God's name. Dear God, I thank you that you love me. Jesus Christ, I invite you into my heart and into my life. And please, take away all my sins, sorrows, pain and hopelessness. Dear Lord, give me hope. Give me a new life. Thank you, Lord. I believe from the bottom of my heart, everyone who comes to you will be born again and start a new life. Dear Lord, thank you for accepting me today. Give me a new heart and life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Dear ones, if you prayed this prayer, know that God's answer is yes. As of today, you are starting a new life and your heart is filled with his love, his peace, and his hope. My friends, from now on, you belong to God, and Jesus Christ belongs to you.